Hi everyone, and a very warm, warm welcome to another session of Need Bites by Merit Nation. And again, we are doing a biology class today, and we are going to discuss about our next unit of biotechnology. Hi Shalini, hi Meghna, hello Nisha, hello Aditya. Good evening, everyone. Okay, so I hope everyone is there with me and everyone is pretty much ready. Hi Smriti, good evening. I am very happy to see you here. So in this unit, we are going to talk about both the chapters of biotechnology, right? That means uses and application as well as the basic principles and concept. Oh, that's great, Aditya. That's great. I hope you did well. Okay. Hi, Bhupradeep. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Okay. So I hope everyone is pretty much ready and we are all set to move ahead with the first question of the day. Hello, Aditi. Good evening. Hello, Muskan. Hi, Devya. Okay. So let's begin and let's see the first question that we have here. And the first question is the process of separation and purification of express proteins before marketing is termed as is it upstream processing, downstream processing, bioprocessing, or post production processing? Yes. Hi, Ashwarya. Good evening. Hi, Divya. Okay. Yes, Akanksha, Divya, Meghna, Aditya, Rashi. Good evening. And the correct answer is option B. Yes, you all know it. So, downstream processing is nothing but purification and separation of the intended compound from a mixture, right? So that is your downstream processing. And upstream processing will be its manufacturing, right? So that is it. Hello, Abreen. Good evening. Hi, Kalpana. No, the correct answer is option B here. Hi, Muskan. Good evening. Okay. So let's move ahead and let's see the next question. So what are the criteria for DNA fragments movement on agarose gel during gel electrophoresis. Hi, Harkirev. Hi, Shalini. Good evening. Good evening, Shalini. Okay. So this is my next question of the day. And it is, I hope, very clearly visible to all of us. And we have already learned about this technique of agarose gel electrophoresis. Right. Hi, Smart Gamer. Hi, Ketan. And we all know on what basis are the various DNA fragments separated. Hi, Bushra. Yes, the correct answer over here, Priya, is option B. The smaller the fragment size, the further it moves across the electric field. Remember, my DNA fragments are negatively charged due to a presence of phosphate ion in them. Right, Rekha? And thus, they will move towards the anode and will move away from the cathode. Hi, Anil Kumar. Yes, the correct answer is option B. Okay, so let's move ahead and let's see the next one here. So. And the next question is, a gene whose expression helps to identify transformed cell is known as. So remember, we are talking about the transformed bacterial cells, which have got the uh, vector of my interest inserted into them. So how am I going to uh, discover the transformed cell, identify the transformed cell? And the correct answer is, well, Kalpana, the correct answer and Ketan, the correct answer, Sharon. Yes, you all know it. It is option A. Selectable markers are introduced in my vector of interest because we need to identify the transformed cell. Yes, like the tetracycline and ampicillin gene in your PR322 uh, vector, right? Plasmid. Yes, the correct answer is option A, Anil. Right. Okay, so let's move ahead. And let's see the next question. So the tag polymerase enzyme is obtained from what? I hope this is very easy one and all of us know it. Sharon, how come it is beta galactose? Yes, Amreen, absolutely right. Well, 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 it is a very easy one. And the correct answer is option D, Thermus aquaticus. So very simple and very straightforward questions are being asked. So no need for any sort of confusion over here. Okay, let's see the next one. And the next question is, 
which of the following is not a feature of the plasmids are they not circular are they not transferable are they single stranded are they capable of independent replication yes the correct answer is i guess yes many of us know the correct answer and the correct answer is option c they are not single stranded remember kalpana they are nisha yes your answer is correct so they are double stranded dna molecules circular dna molecules which act as vectors right capable of independent replication due to a ore region within them right ketan so the correct answer is option c here and let's see the next one so which of the following is a restriction endonuclease so is it a protease is it a dna is one rna is one or hen2 hello navdeep good evening hi fatima good evening okay and yes sudarshan you are right aditya and all of you are right and the correct answer is option d remember hen2 is a restriction endonuclease right whereas your dnas and rnas are nucleases yes kalpana the answer is option d yes nisha you are right okay so let's move ahead and let's see the next one hello madhusmita good evening tell the origin origin of okay hen 2d well just uh, google it and let me know <laughs> yes it was the first uh, i can say restriction endonuclease to be discovered okay so which among the following restriction enzymes produces blunt ends remember when i am talking of blunt ends that means my double stranded dna is going to be chopped off in the center right without producing any sort of sticky ends so which among the four enzymes has the capacity to do the same they all four are restriction endonucleases and the correct answer is option b guys it is eco rv right it is able to chop off between your cta and tag so this is the five prime end this is my third prime end of the dna molecule and over here it will be g here it will be a here it will be t we will have another a here right another t here and another c here so it will produce a blunt end and the blunt end will be produced between cta and tag yes so yes i know it's not there in ncrt but you see it has been asked in neat 2016 so certain questions are there out of a syllabus okay let's see the next one and this one should be easy for all of us steer tank bioreactors are definitely there in my ncrt there is a nice diagram showing it propellers and all right so have been designed for what purpose okay aritya says it is option c akansha says it is c meghna says it is c divya says it is option c what about others let's make it quick okay all right sharan said it is option c what about others muskan says it is option c kalpana says it is option c that's great well the correct answer is option c so the propellers in my steer tank bio reactors will simply rotate and they will ensure that the oxygen is available throughout my tank right so availability of oxygen throughout the bio reactor should be there yes okay let's see the next one amreen the colonies of recombinant bacteria appear white in contrast to blue colonies of non recombinant bacteria because of what what will be the correct option here remember we are talking about two type of transformed bacterial cells one type of transformed bacterial cell has got a non recombinant plasmid in it 
right? The second kind of bacterial cell has got a recombinant plasma in it. So how am I going to differentiate between the two? This is a very journal one. Okay. Yes, Meghna is absolutely correct over here. Aditya, it is option C. Insertional inactivation of alpha uh, galactosidase in recombinant bacteria happens. Right? So that is the correct option. And that's why the colonies remain white. They don't turn blue. Right? This is something you all have learned. This is the simplest one you can expect. Kalpana, the answer is option D. Yes or L? You have given it correct. Okay. Option C is the correct answer. Okay. Let's see the next one quickly. And my next question is, the given figure is a diagrammatic representation of the E. coli vector PBR322. Which one of the given options correctly identifies its certain components? Yes, yes, it is. It is beta. Yes, it is beta galactosidase. So there is a slight mistake over there in the question. So it is beta galactosidase, right? Okay. And the correct answer, Palak, is option D. Yes, Nisha. Yes, the correct answer is option D. And why it is option D? We know very well that ampicillin resistance and tetracycline resistance genes are there, right? In my, uh, so this is my tetracycline resistant gene. And this is my ampicillin resistant gene, which is present in this uh, vector plasmid, right? And the rest all which are mentioned over there, which are labeled over there, except for ORI and ROP region are the, are what? What are these? BAM H1, cell 1, what are these? These are all recognition sites for various restriction endonucleases, right? And for every restriction endonuclease, there is only one recognition site present in a vector plasmid, right? Yes. Yes, Sachin, the answer was option D over there. And next question is, the genetic defect adenosine deaminase deficiency may be cured permanently by what? Okay. So is it option A, option B, option C, or option D? Okay, Aditya says it is option C. Akansha says it is option C. Meghna, Aditi, Ambreen. Sudarshan, so Aditi, Sharan, Smriti, Bapradeep. Okay, well, 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 we have so many over here giving me the answer is C. Kalpana, the correct answer is option C, right? So introducing bone marrow cells, producing ADA into the cells, uh, into uh, introducing the bone marrow cells, producing ADA into the cells at early embryonic stage. Yes. So that is going to be the answer, right? So ADA producing genes has to be inserted into the bone marrow cells during the early embryonic stages to rectify this problem forever. Okay, let's see the next one. So two polypeptides of human insulin are linked together by, well, this is a very easy one. So there are two separate polypeptide chains in insulin. One is a larger one, one is a smaller one. And both of them are linked together by what? Aditi, we are not talking about aminosynthesis over here. Yes, by disulfide bridges. Absolutely correct. Yes. Rashi, it is by disulfide bridges, not by phosphodiester linkages. Right? So phosphodiester linkages are used to join two nucleotides to form a polynucleotide. Remember that. <laughs> okay. Anil, the correct answer is option C. Okay, let's see the next one. And the next question is, yes, Kalpana, you are right. So which part of the tobacco plant is infected by melidogyne incognitia? So is it the leaf, the stem, the root, or the flower? And what is this, by the way? I hope all of us know this. This is pretty easy. Yes. Oh, my God. Akanksha, how can you get this one wrong? This is very definitely mentioned in your NCRT book. 
and the correct answer is option C. Yes, Chaturreka is option C, dear. Yes, related to RNAi. Nisha, the correct answer is option C. Okay, let's see the next one. <laughs> Which kind of therapy was given in 1990 to a four-year-old girl with adenosine deaminase deficiency? Akanksha, that's okay, that's okay. It happens with all of us. All right. So I'm waiting for all of your answers. This is pretty easy. Yes, the correct answer is definitely gene therapy. And what happens due to the deficiency of adenosine deaminase? What does the person suffers with? Anil, the correct answer is option A. Yes, Nisha, you are correct. So what does the person suffers with? Yes, Aditya is absolutely right. Skid, right. Severe combined immunodeficiency syndrome, right. Skid. Okay, let's see the next one. So, golden rice is a genetically modified crop plant where the incorporated gene is meant for the biosynthesis of what? Vitamin B, vitamin C, omega 3, or vitamin A. Yes, less lymphocytes, right? Okay, Aditya says it is option D. Meghna, Palak, Sharan, all are saying it is option D. What about others? Yes, Palak, you are right. Yes, the correct answer, Akanksha, is option D here. Right, so vitamin A, rich. A variety of rice is the golden rice, the biofortified rice. The correct answer, Anel, is option D. Okay, let's move ahead and let's see the next question. And the next question is the introduction of tDNA into the plants involved. So remember, we have a tDNA coming into the plant from where? Song star, star says it is option A. What about others? Yes, option A is correct. Infection of the plant by agrobacterium tumefaciens, right? It is very often used as a medium for transferring genes into my plant system, right? Yes, and it introduces a gene which induces tumors in my plants, right? So you can use this agrobacterium-mediated transformation to transform, to transform your plant cells and thereafter uh, make them uh, genetically modified. Right. And let's see the next question. The first human hormone produced by recombinant DNA technology is what? Okay. <clears throat> and the correct answer is yes, you all know it. It is insulin. Right. Absolutely correct. Right. Okay. Let's see the next one. This was pretty easy. So commonly used vectors for human genome sequencing are, I think this is something we all have done in our molecular biology chapter, right? Where they have mentioned about human genome project in detail. No, Anil, the correct answer is not option A, Kalpana and Anil. Yes, we all know it. Bacterial artificial chromosome and yeast artificial chromosome were used as vector for human genome sequencing. Right. Right, Sharon. Yes. So the correct answer is option B, Nisha, not option C. Okay. Let's see the next question. Which of the following BT crops is being grown in India by the farmers widely? This is pretty easy. Yes, Sandhya, Nehar. You are right. It is cotton crop. We all know it. Okay. So consumption of which one of the following foods can prevent a kind of light blindness or blindness associated with vitamin A deficiency? And I think we have already done this one. This is pretty easy. No, no. By Pradeep, Anil, B is not the correct option. 
Yes, it is option C. We have already done this. Sanjay, right. Right. Option C is the right option here. Okay, let's see the next one. So human insulin is being commercially produced from a transgenic species of what? A transgenic species of not rhizobium kalpana. Definitely. Yes, golden rice is rich in vitamin A, Akanksha. Yes, Prathmesh. Not from Saccharomyces cerevisiae, from a fungus. Yes, definitely from E. coli. Right. Right. Option C is correct. Maximum number of existing transgenic animals is of fish, mice, cow, or pig. Well, let's give the answer to this one. Let's make it quick. Okay, Devya says it is option B. Aditi says it is B. Aditya says it is B. Palak says it is B. Okay, so I will go along with the majority. And the correct answer is definitely option B. Yes. <laughs> Let's see the next one. Okay, Kalpana, the correct answer was option B over there. And let's see the next one. Yes, Aditi, questions are pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Genetic engineering has been successfully used for producing what? We have four options over here. I'm not going to read them up. Okay, Devya says it is option A. That is transgenic mice for testing safety of polio vaccine before use in humans. Meghna says it is option A along with Akanksha. And Sharon says it is option A. Okay, Meghna, that's fine. Yes, Nisha, you nailed it. So the correct answer is option A, definitely Kalpana. Okay, okay, Muskan, yes. <laughs> Even you got it correct. The correct answer is option A. All right, let's move ahead and let's talk about the next question. So some of the characteristics of Bt cotton are what? We have four options here. <laughs> so does it help in producing long fiber, which are resistance to aphids? OK, Aritya says it is option D, high yield and resistance to ball worms. Well, many of your friends are saying it is option C. Some are saying option D. And the correct answer over here is option C. High yield and produces a toxic protein crystal which kills many of the dipteran pets. Right. Including your cotton ball worms. Right. <laughs> it is option C. So this was a bit confusing one. Yes, Anil, you are right. Option C. Okay, let's see the next one. I hope everyone is pretty much ready. And the next question is this. An improved variety of transgenic basmati rice. Ah, well, well, it does help in curing. It does help in tackling many dipteran. Uh, you can say pest along with many lepidopteran ones. Cotton ball worm is a lepidopteran. I know that. Yes. Okay. And here, yes, every one of you have got it correct. And the correct answer is vitamin A. Right. Yes, Radhe Sharma. Okay. Transgenic plants are the ones which. Which will be the correct option over here, Kalpana? We have the next question over here. Transgenic plant are the ones. Sanjay says it is option A. Aditya says it is option A. Akanksha says it is option A. Sham, Meghna, Sharan, Rajabhishek, Aditi, Divya, Rashi, Smriti, Ambreen, Nisha. Okay, what about others? Chitreka, yes, the power of A. Right. So, it is generated by the introduction of foreign DNA into a cell, which is a totipotent cell. 
and from this totipotent cell we are going to grow the whole plant right so conscious soul the correct answer is option a and let's see the next one so a transgenic food crop again see this question has been asked over and over again in many ways that's fine that's fine and sandhya how can you say it is bt soya bean not at all dear yes akanksha i know it yes aditi we are doing quite a good number of questions today and the correct answer is option b yes sham it is option b okay let's see the next one so introduction of food plants developed by genetic engineering is not desirable because of what so what will be the correct option over here aditi says it is option c okay sandhya all right well here the correct answer is option a remember most of the genetically engineered crops their seeds need to be obtained yes kalpana you are right so their seeds need to be obtained over and over again from the same company right because the seeds which the crops are producing cannot be replanted and sown again to have the same uh, gm crop genetically modified crop so the correct answer over here is option a economy of developing countries suffer right okay let's see the next question and the next question is this producing a giant mouse in the laboratory was possible through what Oh that's all right Amreen and let's see this one so is it through random gene mutation muskan remember here gene mutation refers to random gene mutation so definitely that cannot be the answer right or gene manipulation or gene synthesis or gene duplication well the correct answer is option b you are going to manipulate a gene and and make the mice or the mouse to produce excess of growth hormone right and a more of thyroxine so that ultimately it leads to a production of a giant mouse so option b is correct <clears throat> yes yes manipulation is a thoughtful alteration of a gene <coughs> so and here this is a very easy one i hope everyone knows this the first successfully cloned mammals that gained worldwide publicity was <clears throat> yes yes almost everyone know this okay i hope yes it is dolly the sheep right anel it is option d yes nisha you are right okay let's see the next one and the next question is at the transgenic animals are those which have a foreign dna in some of their cells foreign dna in all of their cells i know aditi but that was a very general knowledge question right a general science question i would say so you are expected to know that and definitely option b is correct here we all know this right and that is it for the day guys we are done for today and with that i leave you for today and all the best for your exam preparations prepare well and see you all again coming monday 3:45 pm indian standard time right so till then take care bye bye anel bye kalpana bye everyone bye parol yes it was interesting bye guys